before again before we go any further let's just review what exactly we're talking about here here is a normal distribution curve uh, that's very typical to be drawn from information from samples of populations okay and on the x-axis of course is the values that are being measured and in this case would be all the possible values of the results of our samples and of course the y-axis is always probability so this distribution represents all the possible sample results we could get and the probability of each of those results occurring let's say we go out and collect a sample and that sample just happens to occur right here now I don't care what these values are right here it doesn't matter let's say I go out and collect a sample and it happens to have a, a sample value of right there does this tend to support the idea that this really is the middle or not well yeah it does for any either one of two reasons number one if you look you can see that the probability of this value occurring is pretty big it has a very high probability of occurring why well mainly because it's very close to the middle if we want to think of this being the mean of the population in this case also the mean of all the the possible sample means then we have a sample that's very close to the middle so there's two ways to determine whether or not this value is likely to occur either find its probability its p-value or just notice that it's very close to the middle on the other hand if we go out and collect a sample and calculate the information we need from that sample and that information turns out to be over here well is that likely to occur are we likely to get a sample way out here if the middle really is here there's two ways to tell we can see that the probability of this occurring and technically it's really the probability of this value or anything beyond it to the right occurring the problem of this occurring has a very very small probability and hopefully you've learned that events that have a really really small probability of occurring shouldn't occur unless something funny's going on another way we know that this that this sample result should not have occurred is that it's very far away from the middle what do we mean by very far away well that's something we'll have to define here but every time especially when we're dealing with means we we can determine based on our significance level we can determine exactly what we mean by far from the middle so the, what I want you to get out of this this uh, is that given a distribution of a sample information there's two ways to decide whether or not your sample result is reasonable based on this picture number one either its probability its p-value or its distance from the middle since we can't use p-values we won't be using that idea of probability instead when we're dealing with means we'll use the idea of is this far from the middle okay let's continue new symbols we'll be using and we've already used one a couple of these already the population ones mean we already said is going to be let me change colors here population mean is mu sub 1 the population mean from the second population is going to be written as mu sub 2 okay the size of my sample from the first population well sample size are represented by n so this be n sub 1 this will be n sub 2 these should be pretty obvious the sample size mean well we know we represent mean with x bar so this will be x sub 1 bar and the other sample will be x sub 2 bar we don't know the population standard deviation but we certainly ought to be able to calculate this each sample's standard deviation and you might recall a sample's standard deviation is represented by s so that'll be s sub 1 and s sub 2 these are the symbols that we'll, we will be using okay Please recall, we always assume for testing purposes that the null hypothesis, the equality statement, is true. Okay? In this case, that means we're assuming that there really is no difference between the two populations. And recall, we've already written down what we say the, the null hypothesis is. To say that there's no difference between them means that mu sub 1 equals mu sub 2. Okay? 
Now, it's time for us to, dis to sketch our distribution. And what this distribution is that we're sketching, it's very important to understand this, this is going to be information from the samples, two samples. Specifically, we're going to take all the possible differences from the first population sample, subtract from, from that all the different possible sample results from the second one in terms of sample means. We're going to sketch a distribution made up of differences of sample means from the two samples. So once again, my distribution is going to look like this. A normal distribution, but it's going to be tightly packed toward the middle, and the, the middle is going to have the most highest probability of occurring. Okay? Now, the, we're assuming this is what it's looked like, and if we're going to assume the null hypothesis that there is no difference between the two, then that means that the difference between any two samples, what should occur most often is zero, shouldn't it? We're claiming that this distribution should peak at zero. When you subtract the average age of one population sample from the average age of another population sample, most of those ought to be zero if there really is no difference. Now, since, since we are going to be testing, well, that's not P sub 1 and P sub 2, that's mu sub 1 and mu sub 2 being bigger than mu sub 2. This is, our, this is really our alternate test that we're ultimately trying to test. This is going to be a right-tailed test. We're going to be testing over on this right side, this right tail. Okay. Now it's time to show you our samples. What, what were the results from the study? Before we go any further, we need to know that. And here's the information. First of all, let's look at the uh, population two first, the sample from the promoted employees. This is, this is population, population two. There were 30 employees in the sample, and the average mean age of the employees that were promoted was 43.9 years to the nearest tenth of a year. And the standard deviation was calculated of this sample, and it was 5.9. Population number one, which is the employees that were not promoted, that, that are filing the lawsuit, there were 23 in the sample that was chosen, and the mean average age of those employees was 47.0 years, and the standard deviation was 7.2. Well, you may notice right away that, yeah, the ones that weren't promoted were older than the ones that uh, were promoted. But the question is, are they significantly older? We want to know. If we go out and collect a sample from population one, which we did, and collect a sample from population two, which we did, and take the difference of those two means of those samples, where will it be over here on the right side? Will it be very far away from the middle? Will it be close to zero or not? It's time to define what we mean by far from the middle, far to the right in this case. So we're going to use our T distribution table uh, with how many degrees of freedom? Well, let's see. Uh, this is a sample size of 30 and this is a sample size of 23 so my larger degrees of freedom is going to be one less than 30 which is 29 so we'll be using 29 degrees of freedom and we've already chosen an alpha value of what do we say uh, 5% so that's going to be 0 0.05 here's our T distribution table and I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit so here we are at 29 degrees of freedom, uh, and we want to go over to the table 2.045. This is the end of part two. In part three, we'll complete this example by doing the calculations of the math.